Hi, I'm Brian Russell, and I'm the author of the brand new book, Astonished by the Word, Reading Scripture for Deep Transformation. And I wanted to speak directly to, to you and talk about some of the takeaways and skills and insights that you're going to gain personally if you would choose to read uh, my book. I wrote Astonished by the Word specifically for persons like you who love scripture, whether you're a longtime reader or new to the Bible, whether you're a pastor or a Bible teacher or just a person who loves to read scripture, I want to help you to unlock not just interesting ideas about the Bible, but actually unlock the power of the Holy Spirit so it can flow into your life and use Scripture to actually deeply transform you in love for God and help you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because one of the things that keeps us from being astonished and from deeper levels of transformation that God wants to do in our lives are the various blind spots that we have and the biases that we have. And, and those biases come from really our upbringing. They can come from our own guilt, our own shame, traumas that we've experienced, fears, and sense. And so I wanted to write a book that comes out of my own experiences and how I've both been blessed by Scripture, challenged by Scripture, perplexed by Scripture, but most profoundly astonished by Scripture. So I break my book into uh, three sections, essentially. Let me just talk about what you'll see in each one of these. By the way, the book was intentionally written so that it's accessible to anyone. It, is, uh, it comes out of my 30 years of preaching and teaching and writing about the Bible and out of my 24 years of classroom experiences at the seminary level. I do have a PhD in biblical studies, but I wrote this book using the language that I grew up. I'm a product of a working class family from Northeast Ohio with roots in Appalachia. So I know how to communicate to everybody, whether you're an academic, a pastor, or a, a person who maybe didn't even go to college. This book is accessible for you. Also include study guides, so if groups wanted to use it. But essentially what I do in part one is first I introduce the key, a key idea. Uh, the idea, the big idea behind this book is St. Augustine, who was a church leader in the early church. He lived around 400 AD. He wrote a book on Christian doctrine, and I love a quote that comes from the book. He says, anyone who thinks that he's understood the divine scriptures or any part of them, but cannot by his understanding build up this double love of God and neighbor has not yet succeeded in understanding them. In other words, after we've read scripture, after we've done the work to try to understand what the writer was trying to say, the ultimate test of whether we really understand any part of the Bible is do we understand how this passage actually helps us to love God and to love our neighbor more profoundly. You know, that's the kind of biblical reading, biblical knowledge that our world desperately needs. And the introduction to this is I in the title of the book comes from one of my favorite prayers and I've been teaching this for a long time. It's probably has its roots in both Thomas Merton and in Ellen Davis, uh, but it's 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 this prayer. Lord astonish me anew with the riches of your word. I mean, that's a prayer that I made up, but again, I got that idea about being astonished from my predecessors. I also put in insights that I've gained from some of my mentors in this book. Um, so introduce those pieces, and then part one, I basically explore what exactly is the Bible? What does it mean that it's revelation? What does it mean that it's inspired? And I wanna show you not just facts about that, but my goal is to describe describe, not just give you some third person thing, but I want you to describe how scripture works in our lives, my life, your life, and to explore why we, and I'll say I, may struggle in reading it for deep spiritual formation. So that's part one. And then part two, we're going to confront head on what I think the fundamental issue is, 
And that's what the Old Testament would call idolatry. Uh, in modern uh, writings might think of these are unconscious blocks inside of our lives that essentially function in blocking what the Spirit really wants to do in our lives. And for this book, I've developed a method of reading that I, I'm calling idolatherapy. So it's a combination of idolatry and therapy. And uh, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek term, but I, at the same time, I'm dead serious on this. And what I would say, idolatherapy is a form of divine therapy. This is the work of the Holy Spirit when we learn to surrender a little more to God while reading the Bible that directly targets the parts of our lives that aren't fully surrendered to God. And that's the interpretive lens that over the course of my decades of reading scripture, reading books about scripture, teaching, studying myself, I found that this is what has opened up my heart to God and allowed God to come into parts of my soul that have actually hindered my growth in love. And we'll explicitly explore, explicitly explore how brokenness, shame, biases, and sin can really thwart the work that God wants to do. And then in part three, I'm going to model this way of reading that I believe honors that Augustine's intentions and hopefully serves you powerfully in your personal growth. I'm going to lay out a way to read scripture that combines biblical studies with contemplative practices and also share some examples of selected passages from both the Old and New Testament that I think highlight this. I'd love and be it'd be my privilege to serve you through the book. Again, if you have any questions, you can feel re feel free to reach out to me, deepdivespirituality at gmail.com. You can purchase your own copy of Astonished by the Word, Reading Scripture for Deep Transformation. You can pick up a copy at Amazon.com or you can buy it directly from inviteresources.com. You can see below for links to those things. Thank you for listening. Until next time, live by faith, be known by love, and be a voice of hope to others.